You might have come across the term tensors while studying deep learning. Tensors are fairly ubiquitous terminology in two of the most popular deep learning libraries, namely PyTorch and TensorFlow. While looking at the word tensor, you might have flashbacks from your linear algebra or physics classes. And you might be wondering in the context of deep learning, what are tensors exactly? In today's short video, we'll answer this question specifically in the context of deep learning. We'll first take a look at the formal definition of tensors in deep learning from the people building PyTorch. Then we'll check how tensors are actually used in deep learning. Finally, we'll check three typical examples of tensors for deep learning that you might encounter. Before we start though, there is a pretty big asterisk on this video. This is not a physics, math, or engineering video about stress tensors or other kind of formally defined mathematical construct. Tensors in deep learning and the fundamental mathematical object called tensors are slightly different things. If you're looking for this formal mathematical concept, check out the description. I have a few interesting physics video that I recommended on that. Okay, first off, let's define tensor formally in a deep learning context. Tensor in deep learning refer to the generalization of vectors and matrices to an arbitrary number of dimension. Another name for the same concept is multidimensional arrays. This is taken from the deep learning with PyTorch book, greatly recommended. It's written by a bunch of people that built PyTorch. The implied meaning here is that the tensor in deep learning is a multidimensional array. There is nothing deeper or more complicated than that with tensors. Let's take a look at a few dimensions of a tensor to illustrate how we go from a zero dimension tensor to an n dimensional tensor. The simplest tensor dimension we could have is one without dimension. So here, a dimension of zero. This is usually not called a tensor, but a scalar. In PyTorch, you might just see that as a floating point variable. If we stack some of these floating points together with order, we now have a tensor with one dimension, but we usually don't call that a tensor. We call that an array or just a vector since it stores floating point. This vector can be either a row or a column vector, but it usually doesn't matter much if the higher dimension tensor are not involved. If you stack some of these vector or array together, you get a tensor with two dimensions. Yet, this is usually not called a tensor. This is called either a 2D array or a matrix. Only when we start stacking up a few layers of them in a third dimension that we officially call this a tensor. This is usually best visualized as a rectangular volume. If we then stack these 3D tensors in an array, then we get a tensor with four dimension. It's important to note that all of these rectangular volume will have exactly the same shape to be stacked into the next dimension. And you can go on and on and on and have tensors of thousands of dimension if you want, but for now, you get the point in terms of visualization. Now that we know how a tensor is defined, let's look at how a tensor is used in deep learning usually. Tensors are first and foremost the input of a deep neural network. It's what goes inside the net neural network that will then activate neurons inside to react in a certain way. Similarly, all the info, like the weights, biases, output of a layer inside a deep neural network is also stored in tensors of usually two or three dimensions. The input part of deep learning is where you will bump into tensors heavily. Usually the network input architecture is fixed and will accept a specific kind of format. The raw data you have is usually flat and stored in two dimension. An important part of a deep learning experiment is to process this flat information and bring it to a normalized tensor shape that can be then fed into a neural network for training or for inference. Fun fact, you will rarely see any mention of tensor in scikit-learn or any shallow learning libraries. Usually we'll encounter the term data frame, which is two dimensional. Anyway, let's check out the three typical example tensor you might encounter during deep learning tasks. Tableau data is the simplest form of data you will usually encounter in deep learning or standard machine learning experiment. It can be visualized as a vector of information with no ordering of the column. Multiple data points are codified in the row direction. So you have column with the features, and the rows, which is a sample data point. Most usually, tabular data are fed in a neural network as a matrix where multiple rows or batch of data are fed at once. One thing to note is for tabular data, XJBoost or Random Forest a machine learning classifier usually outperform neural networks, especially for medium sized data sets. A great article on why the tree based model still outperform deep learning is in the description. It's by the author of SQLearn. It's, it's a great read. Anyway, 
So for tabular data, the training data in matrix form is fed into the network, or in this case, XGBoost. The second type of data you will usually encounter in deep learning is images. On the left, you see a bunch of digit images from the MNIST dataset. And on the right, you see some MRI brain scans, which are grayscale pixel images. Images have three dimensions and are best understood as a 3D tensor. The three dimensions are the height and width of an image, as well as the channel information for each pixel. The number of channels for images is usually three for RGB, but can have an unlimited amount of channels. You could imagine a sensor capturing images on a whole lot of different spectrum of light and storing these tensors as an n-dimensional tensor. These images are usually fed into a neural network as a 4D tensor, where the image are three-dimensional tensors, but that fourth dimension represents the batch size. As most neural networks are trained with gradient ascent, usually a pass through the network happens with a mini batch of data of various size. The usual suspect in terms of neural network architecture for image-based data are either convolution-based or vision transformer. That's kind of the state of the art. Finally, third type of example tensor you will encounter in deep learning is video type. These are nothing more than a series of images, so tensors of size 3, that are stacked together in a very specific sequence of what we call frames. These frames encode change in the pixel across time, and their ordering is very important for the understanding of the video data. Therefore, a video tensor input to a neural network can be seen as having five dimensions, three for the image, or what we call the frame, one more for a stack of image for a specific video or a subsection of a video, and finally another dimension for a batch of these video to feed into the neural network as a mini batch. The neural network type for video can take many forms, but it's usually a modified form of vision-based network that leverages the sequential aspect of the batch of data being fed to it. Like in this slow fast network pictured on the screen. There's many more type of uh, data, but these three represent like the different type of tensors that you, you might encounter. If you want to have a better grasp of tensor for deep learning, I highly suggest diving to the book, Deep Learning with PyTorch. Very solid overall, uh, and I have a link in the description. Okay, that's it. I hope this was useful. Don't forget to like the video if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any question. I'm here to help. Have a great week, everyone, and see you in the next video.